ultimate day of our Butterick 6386 Lizette Windbreaker Sew Along. How exciting! Today is all about finishes. We're not going to do a ton of sewing. We're just going to talk through um, drawstrings. We're going to talk through stoppers. We're going to talk through all those little finishing details that are going to ensure that your windbreaker looks phenomenal inside and out, top to bottom, no matter who's looking at it. The most critical sewist of all sewists or your grandma who just loves everything that you make anyways. <laughs> Um, so let's head to the cutting table and we'll start talking through some of these details. All right, so today's video is just about all these little finishing details that we've got to ensure that you have a beautiful jacket inside and out. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and clip any of the threads that I just happened to miss. As I was going, I, I try and clip the threads, but you guys know, um, sometimes you just get so excited and you don't and you don't get around to it or you forget to do it. So I'm gonna go through and clip any loose threads that I find um, to kind of clean it all up inside and out. Okay, now I'm gonna start removing all this basting stitching. I've got some on the sleeves from where we um, basted those seam allowances for the casing. So I'm gonna remove all of that. And then I'm also going to remove the basting stitches that are holding the little reinforcement piece of fabric underneath our buttonholes. So all of this is gonna come out. Don't forget to remove the um, basting stitches on the hood as well as the hem. All right, cool. And then if you remember from whenever I made the zipper way back in the second video of this series, I had um, offset my basting stitches so that they would be really easy to pull out. So now I'm gonna be pulling those out as well. Okay, and once you get that done, then it is time to cut open your buttonholes. Now, you'll notice that I didn't cut my buttonholes open as we were sewing this, and that's because I wanted to make sure, that since this is my first time making this jacket, that the buttonholes ended up in the right places. I didn't want to cut holes in my fabric until I knew for sure that that was how they were going to stay. So in future versions, I probably would cut this open before I attach the hood to the jacket, but because I didn't, that's okay. We can easily cut these open now. Um, so I'm gonna put a pin through the top of the buttonhole like so, and that's gonna prevent my seam ripper from going too far into the uh, buttonhole seam. So just use the knife of your seam ripper and put it through the buttonhole like so. And you just wanna make sure that you're getting through all the fibers of the jacket. Yep, there we go. And then move the pin to the other side and make sure that you're getting all the way through that area as well. Now we have four buttonholes to do, so um, do this for all four. Okay, I'm having a hard time getting the pin through on that one, so I'm gonna show you an alternate way. Now you need super sharp scissors in order to do this, but you are going to clip into the buttonhole like ever so slightly. Um, we're just trying to get through like one layer of fabric here. So once you've got that opened, then you can use your scissors to cut open the rest. Like that one half and then you come get the other half after that.
All right, so everything should be cleaned up and your buttonhole should be cut open. So now it's time to install our cording. So I got shoe strings, which I know sounds really bizarre, but I found that these look really good. You can get them in a ton of colors, different widths, lots of different lengths, and they're cheap. They were really, really inexpensive. So I will link the exact ones that I'm using here. And it's also really cool because you don't need to attach a, a safety pin or anything. And this is gonna serve as our little lead to get it through um, our hood. I swear you will always find loose, <laughs> loose threads. Um, so mine has like a right side and a wrong side, kinda, sorta. So I'm gonna try and honor that, but um, because the ends of shoestrings are finished off with these little plastic things, um, I'm going to have a really pretty end to mine as well. Now, if you don't, that's okay. Um, you can just tie off little knots on the bottom, but, um, either attach a, uh, safety pin to the end of your cording and feed it through like I'm doing now, or, um, But if yours doesn't have a, you know, something plastic or whatever on the end, just attach the safety pin, just like we did for the elastic in the sleeves and feed it through that way. For the hem, I'm gonna try a tool that I have that I love. Um, and if it ends up working out, I'll link that in the description box as well. All right, and there you have it. That is our hood cording. How cool does that look? I love the shoestrings as like an affordable um, option for cording. I will definitely be doing that now. Okay, so for the hem, I wanna try and use this clover tool that I have. I can't remember, I think it's called a clip and glide, clip and glide bodkin or something like that. Um, and if this works, like I think it will, um, I'll link it in the description box. The only thing about the clipping glide that I don't like is because it has this mechanism on the end, you can only use it on like rather large uh, casings. Um, anything less than an inch, I don't think it would work. Oh, it might not even go through our buttonhole. It does hold on to the, um, the cording or whatever you're using really, really well. So you can trust that you can be rough with it and it's not going to, whoops, and it's not going to um, unclip. All right, that was much faster. Just try and get these a little bit even. And then we've got our hem cording in as well. So, so cool. All right, um, then if you put in a label like I did, um, I'm gonna come in here and hand stitch this closed because right now it's just kind of flopping around. So I'll hand stitch that down. Oh, I can't forget our cord stops. Another fun little detail of this pattern. So these are ones that I got from Joanne, uh, but they have, uh, there are others online that you can get like metal ones, you can get different colored ones, but basically they work with a little spring mechanism and you just make sure that you get this hole lined up with this hole and then you should be able to slide your uh, cording in. Now, if you don't have like a plastic end on your cording, you're gonna wanna wrap some tape or something like that around just to make sure that you can get it through like that. And this just ensures that if you close up your hood, you know, and you make the, uh, the uh, hood tight, that you'll be able to keep this, keep it tight with the little cord stop. Really, really neat. So I have four of those, um, obviously one for each end of the cord. All right, you guys, there she is, our finished jacket. How proud are you? You should be so proud of yourself. Let's all take a moment 
to express gratitude for our minds and our bodies that were able to carry us through this process. You guys, this pattern is not super simple. It is not for the faint of heart. There were lots of challenging moments. I went through them. I'm assuming you went through them too, but maybe a little bit less since I was able to help you out with them. Um, but yeah, you have a windbreaker that you made all by yourself. It's truly amazing. And I know I am so proud of you. Um, tomorrow, I am going to be revealing the finished version of my jacket. I will be wearing it, modeling it, talking about the pattern, um, talking about just my kind of general thoughts about how it all came together. So if you want to reveal with me tomorrow, uh, feel free to do that. If you do decide to post, whether it's a progress pic or a picture of it on your mannequin or hanging on a hanger or on your body in any way, um, feel free to use the hashtag ITL, I'm sorry, I-T-H-S-A-L inside the hem sew along. That way I can find your make and anybody else that wants to see how the sew along went for others can see it as well. Um, but that is going to do it for me today. I thank you all so, so, so much for coming along with me on this journey. It was an honor to teach all of you. I hope you're super proud of what you made and I'll see you back here in a couple months for our next sew along.